Hi, hi, welcome to Godevo. So in this episode of the Lead Code series, we are going to solve this question called find the index of the first occurrence in a string. So this is a very simple question. We are given a string and a substring. We will have to find the first occurrence of the substring in the string. That's basically the question, but it's given as a little complicated here. Let's get to read this question, try it out to find a logic for this question in order to solve it and then use that logic and an algorithm to finally get coding in the lead code. So let's get started. So here we are given two strings, a needle and a haystack. Return the index of the first occurrence of the needle in haystack or minus one if needle is not part of the haystack. So this question is basically based on the concept of this idiom, a needle in a haystack. So essentially we are given a haystack and then a needle is present in the haystack. As we know, it is very difficult to find the needle in the haystack, right? It's really hard because the needle is very tiny and the haystack is very big consisting of lots of stuff. Coming back to the question, we will be given a haystack like sad but sad. It's the given string here that is our haystack. And needle is the substring that we want to find in this haystack, okay? So here sad is the substring that we want to find whether it is present in the uh, string or not, okay? We have to return the index but where it is present, okay? So with that, let's get started. So how do we do that? We have the first three letters of the substring and let's compare it with the original string. So here we have sad and the first three letters of the haystack. Are they equal? Yes, they are equal. So in this example, we got it in the first instance. But in the other example that we have here, we'll return the index of zero. But if we have an example like this, lead code. So in this example, we have code, the first four letters of the substring is code and the first four letters of the main string is lead. So is lead equal to equal to code? No. Then we move on to the next letter. Is etc equal to code? No, it is not. E TCO, no. TCOD, no. CODE and COD. Now it's equal. So we'll have these iterations, and whenever it's equal to the substring that we have, in that case, we'll return the index. If not, we'll continue proceeding. And at last, when we run out of the index or when the array is completed, we'll say that we didn't find anything and return minus one if we didn't find anything. Okay. So that's basically the concept here. Okay. But we have a catch here. Should we check whether lead is equal to code? We can see that the first letter itself is not same. So there is no point in che checking the other letters as well, right? So first, let us get to the point where the first letter is same. If we read such an element, then we'll check the consecutive letters. So this is used to optimize the square uh, algorithm a bit so that we don't waste the uh, iterations on checking for I uh, know wrong answers. Okay, so here we have L and C are the same. No, E and C no, E and C no, T and C no, and finally we get C and C here. So we start checking the other two letters. O and O are same. Yes, D and D are same. Yes, E and E are same. Yes. So in case if this uh, D was uh, replaced by cook, okay, so lead cook. In that case, we'll have C and C would be same. Yes, O and O are same. Yes. O and D will not be same. Lead cook and the cook is not equal to code, right? So the letters don't match each other. In that case, we would say that that is not the answer and we'll move on to the next iteration. If we find anything in the later part of the string, we will return that index. If not, we'll return minus one as the answer. So this is basically the logic. We'll have a for loop and then search for this substring in the main string, okay? So that's basically the idea. So now let's get to lead code and solve this question. So there are basically two implementation of this question. The first implementation is going to be just one line. And the second implementation is going to be uh, approximately 10 lines. Okay. I show you both and then you can decide for yourself which one do you want. Okay. So return, we have a function called index of. So haystack dot index of needle. This is the exact same answer that we'd get with the 10 lines of code. Okay, since that is a function already built into Java, 
we can directly use it in order to find the answer but of course in interviews they would not accept this uh, single line answer we would have to code the actual code of index of itself so whatever this function does you know we would have to code that logic in order to get selected so i am just pointing it out that this exists as well okay so now let's get started with the actual code so the actual code is going to be like first let's iterate to the ha haystack so int i is equal to 0 i is less than haystack dot length of and i plus plus now in this what are we going to do is we are going to check whether the first letter of needle and the element in haystack are same as we saw it doesn't make sense to compare all the four letters in our case with the four letters of haystack if the first letter doesn't match right so if the first letter doesn't match obviously we are not going to get our answer then so there is no point in checking the other three letters matches with the haystack uh, haystack uh, string so the first condition that we are going to say is whether haystack dot cat of i is equal to equal to needle dot caret of 0. In that case, the first letter of needle and the haystack's uh, caret i position would be the same. In that case, we can move on checking the next letters, right? If the next letters, next consecutive letters are same as the substring and in the main string, then we would return that specific index. So for that, we have to check the other letters, right? For need we for that we need another while loop. So I'm gonna declare some loop variables here. So we have already used i, so I'm gonna start using j, and the j variable is for our needle. So it starts from zero, and our k variable, let's say, is for our haystack. Okay. So with these two variables as our loop variables, we are gonna write this while loop. So the first condition is gonna be that we do not want an array index out of bounds error, right? So we must first check that whether j is less than uh, needle dot length of. And at the same time, k should be less than haystack dot length of. So these two numbers must be less than the actual or the total length of it. Only then we'll be able to check the conditions. If they are greater than or equal to, in that case, we'll get array into out of bounds and we don't want that. So this is the first condition that we are going to have. But not just this, we also need to check whether the elements are equal. Only if they are equal, we can move on to the next element and check whether those elements are equal. So the next condition is going to be needle dot caret of j should be equal to haystack dot caret of k if these two elements are equal in that case we would have the substring letter matches with the main strings letter so we'll increment the value of the loop variables i uh, sorry j and k plus plus and we'll check whether we have completed the substring if in case we have completed the substring and all the letters matches with the main string we have found our answer right in that case j would be equal to needle dot length and if we reach that point in that case we have found our answer and hence we need to return the index which is i so we'll have lead code and then code here ll are not same ec are not same ec is not same tc is not same c and c is same so this condition is true now now we come inside we have the j value is equal to 0 and k value is equal to 4 in this case. Okay. Now, with the values as j and k, we will continue searching. S, c and c same. Yes. Next letters, o and o same. Yes. Next iteration of while loop, d and d same. Yes. Next iteration of while loop, e and e same. Next iteration of while loop. Before that, before going to the next iteration, we will check whether j is equal to equal to needle dot length our needle dot length is 4 and j it started out from 0 and it has crossed 4 letters c o d e now its value would be 4 and hence we have 
completed the substring. So, this condition will be satisfied and will return the value of i which was 4 right and that is the starting point of the word code and that is our answer which is the first occurrence of the substring or the needle in the hex tag okay. So, in case if the element is not present you would have to return minus 1 that is written outside the for loop here. So, let us run this code for any syntax error that we might left and if that is not the case then we will submit the code and check for all the other cases that we are given here and congratulations we have solved this question successfully. So, this is how you solve the question of the first index of the sorry find the index of the first occurrence in the given string ok. Such an easy question you can also do it in that one line or I guess it is about 10 lines yeah. So, this is the solution to this question. So, of this video please drop a like and comment down below if you have any questions and do not forget to click the subscribe button. So, see you next week in another episode of Lead Code. Bye bye.